There he is. <laughs> there he got is. It. Oh man, you gotta you you're trying to grow some what what's that dirt on your face? You you forgot to wash your face this morning? I painted it on. <laughs> I painted it on so I so I look more, you know, what's it called? Uh, distinguished. Yeah, okay. I like it, man. A little more mature. I like yeah, it. Yeah, man, I'm 42 years old. I've never had a beard, so I figure why not? Cool, man. Awesome. Well, I'm a, well, I guess we'll just go ahead and jump right into this. Welcome back to Zombie Squad cast uh, here on Dead on Pictures on, on YouTube, on the on the live streaming airways sort of live streaming anywhere and uh today my today my guest is seth haskins seth haskins uh not only went to my high school so we're fellow alumni of dematha catholic high but seth haskins is a is a real estate mogul an entrepreneur a real estate master master of real estate and uh he was my realtor twice um one for selling and one for buying so, uh, Seth, if you don't mind, introduce yourself. Tell us a little bit about what you do and who you are. Uh, I'm Seth. Yes, Glenn uh, is my good friend and client. Um, I've been in real estate for 15 years. Uh, at first as a title agent, and then when the market crashed in, you know, 07, 08, uh, you know, business was scarce as far as closing deals. So I learned how to do short sales. And then that's when I got my license. And I've been to a couple different brokerages. I'm at Remax Platinum now, and I really like the office. Um, and I was excited for this spring market. And I'm now good. I'm not so excited about yeah. the spring market. But uh, yeah. I feel like it's survival of the fittest. So... Hopefully, agents like myself have done some good work in the past and been responsible because it's bound to be a little slow right now. But uh, sometimes good things can turn out of bad situations like this. Sure, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, um, that's pretty much that's pretty much what the show is about right now. It's how people are impacted, how people are persevering, how people are finding hacks and tricks to kind of switch gears and still make make it work uh make it work in their benefit as opposed to you know locking them down and shutting them down and, and ruining them um grubhub uh with, with a lot of other dis uh, businesses grubhub and it's still working where a lot of a lot of businesses are doing takeout and carry out and uh and, and a little bit of delivery um, a lot of filmmakers uh, on camera personalities are doing it this way now uh, we're they're doing the zoom they're doing the online streaming sort of bit instead of gathering and so uh, in that regard I you're 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 in a bit of a different um, beast here being real estate how how would you say you're impacted um, if you want to go into more detail about how you're impacted how Negatively or positively, how have you been impacted for the past month with this quarantine, lockdown, shut-in? Uh, well, there's definitely been a definite, undoubtedly impacted myself. I'm sure, and you know other agents that I've spoken with. Uh, matter when this thing first started getting serious around here, around Montgomery County, around Maryland, I actually had. Uh, we were going to, I have a listing, a good listing in Chevy Chase that we had an agreement on and they actually had to sell, sell their home, but they didn't have to sell the home to buy my listing, but they were concerned because of the situation that they'd, you know, be sitting on two mortgages because they wouldn't be able to sell their home because of the situation, which is, you know, people are, are skeptical and hesitant and scared to go in other people's homes and, other, you know, sellers are hesitant to have people that they don't know coming in their homes. You know, I mean, you can't, you know, can't clean everything every time someone comes in your home. And so, yeah, I mean, slowings have showed down, slowed down unbelievably. I don't, I, I don't think even open houses are, I, don't, I think the governor is not letting realtors do open houses. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, but so you're kind of going to have to deal with the buyers that are in need right now, because the last thing that you can do is 
is someone who's uncomfortable, a client that's uncomfortable, either putting their home on the market and letting people come see it, or, or a buyer that's, you know, out trying to get a home in the spring market. If they're not, if they're not in need enough uh, to, you know, to move forward and just take the proper precautions, then you gotta, you gotta let them be, you know, and you gotta respect that. And you yourself as an agent have to be, have to be careful. I mean, you, you don't know where your clients have been either. Mm -hmm. So Absolutely. yeah, there's a huge impact. Um, I think that you're going to have to bang your books and, you know, really talk to people that you've already worked and helped and, you know, see if they have people that are in need. I mean, there are like, I, I actually had an old friend call me. Luckily, thank God they called me two days ago. And um, actually her husband had passed away and uh, of, you know, he, I, I believe he had cancer, uh, this is a sad story. And she, you know, she needed housing, like she needs it. So she was not hesitant at all. We actually went out to Clarksburg and saw three places and she loved one of them. And we're trying to write it, you know, we're actually going to write an offer. Uh, so, you know, situations like that, you know, it's great. People are, are, are in need and, you know, we, wore gloves and so you know but yeah definitely it's it's slow it's not the spring market i think all of us thought it was going to be yeah yeah um okay so uh, so from what i take from that you know there hasn't been much open houses is there i mean with today's technology you know you have uh zillow you have I guess some other apps, are you able to somehow jump in with clients and do virtual, virtual, virtual tours of a home online? Totally. Yeah, no, no. So yeah, I mean, the agents have had to, yeah, put a lot more focus on the virtual stuff, just like, you know, someone bought stock in zoom, you know, a couple months ago. I mean, they, you know, they'd be killing it. I mean, uh, so yeah, virtual tours. Um, I would say the people who are doing virtual tours for agents are definitely have an influx of business. Um, super important right now. Yeah, do stuff virtually, but you know, at the same time, are you going to be able to? Are you going to be able to get to the table to get a deal ratified? You know, for people seeing something virtually. Right. You know. Um, I think initially to see a place and get a good idea about it, if you'll like it. Yeah, that's great. But it's, especially if, you know, if the house is, you know, you know, a nice house that, you know, it could be four or 500,000, even, you know, a, a buyer could be hesitant to make an offer and move forward on a home that they actually have not been in. Right. Right. You know? uh, but yeah, you're right. Uh, virtual tour company, you know, photographers, people like that uh they're definitely having to do more work right now because you know if you don't have a virtual tour a lot of people aren't going to be able to see what what your listing on the inside is really about like walking through it so yeah there's there's definitely you know definitely some things that agents have had to change over the past what month and a half or so you make you make a good point uh you know chris page he actually lives out in uh brian's younger brother actually lives out in Fredericksburg, Virginia. You forget we went to we went to high school together. With them. I, I know, I, I know. So yeah, so so Brian's younger brother Chris lives out in Fredericksburg, Virginia, and he sent me a text. He goes, you know, I've been up for three days straight because my neighbor just bought this house next door to me. They're doing all these renovations, all these contractors during the during the quarantine. Apparently, I don't know how I don't know how they're shutting down over there in uh, in Virginia, Fredericksburg, Virginia. Anyway. But contractors have been in there for two straight days, banging, and hammering, and stuff like that. And, you know, he, he even told me, I was looking at this house. I saw it was for sale. And I was looking at this house online with this virtual tour. And everything looked great. He even sent me a link. I looked at the links of the virtual, uh, of the house on, I think, Zillow, it might have been. And kind of like taking pictures of it. It looked great. And yet still, the buyers want, apparently wanted to rip a whole room apart. So you you just you just never know, uh, based on. But I'm sure they've been in the house, right? They went in the house. The the buyers. They must have. They must have done a physical, uh, open house or a physical tour of the house, or maybe they did a virtual tour. They get in there and they're like, 
I still want to rip the, who knows? I mean, that's, that was in Fredericksburg. So, you know. Construction, contracting, that stuff. I mean, unless, you know, the, the people who are the owners of the properties who are, are pulling out, contracting is going on, you know. Uh, it's, right. I feel like it's less dangerous, you know, they're, you know, they're not, you know, guys are working in houses or, you, you know, they're spaced out from one another. That hasn't slowed down a bit. So, but here's another question of mine, because he told me he saw movers and he's like, these movers are still moving shit. So a stranger comes into the old place, grabs this person's belongings, puts, I, I would, I would hope masks and gloves, but grabs all this person's belongings, put them in a truck, comes to the new place and unloads the stuff. So you're still having some sort of contact with a stranger's belongings. Yeah. I think it comes back to that, to the essential, you know, if someone's moving, that's an essential thing. Maybe it is probably under contract before things got this serious. Yeah. You had to move forward. You know, I don't think there's any kind of way to, you know, stop something like that. I think that the busy stuff in real estate right now are transactions that were already in process you know, three, four weeks ago, maybe before this got, you know, to be what it is right now. But mm -hmm. as far as new transactions and new, you know, buyers going out and uh, people selling their listings, I, you know, for me, I'm, I'm definitely seeing a huge impact. Wow. Okay. Um, kind of jumping on the other side of the impact, how would you say personally you're impacted? I mean, uh, family, loved ones, uh, significant others, maybe, uh, pets, friends, how would you say personally on the personal side, being impacted, maybe being stuck in the house all day? Um, well, you know, it's weird because as an agent, you know, we have a lot of expenses and things don't slow down. Uh, you know, you always have, you have your mortgage to pay, you have your, you know, your car note. Um, so it is stressful, but at the same time, I don't want, I don't know if liberating is the right word, uh, but you're, you're not really expected to really be out there doing a bunch of stuff that you know that you would usually have to do. So, it, you know, even though I, I like the grind, I like having to go after it and get it. You know, as you know, you know, I'm very energetic agent, you know, very aggressive agent. Um, but, you know, to kind of sit back and reflect on a bunch of things and really feel blessed for your health, and you know try to be smart about doing the right thing just not for yourself but for others you know it kind of puts things in perspective mm -hmm. um but yeah it's it is a little scary but at the same time I, you know i don't feel that much stress you know i'm I, I, like i told you i'm moving back into my townhouse that i had the, the tenants in so i've had time to you know work on that and do the renovations and stuff that i need and as far as the parents, you know, I am close with my parents. I see them I, I, at least once or twice a week, which I haven't seen them, uh, I'd say in three and a half or four weeks. But, you know, for both of us, you know, they, they got a place out in Pasadena. And, you know, they, they've been just isolating too. So I'm just going to wait, um, you know, keep my distance. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, I also feel like maybe it pulls everyone closer together because we're all in the same situation. We're all probably stressed. Uh, but at the same time that uh, you're, you know, dealing with that stress, <laughs> you're not really supposed to be out there doing the stressful work that, you know, normally you'd have to do. Absolutely. Just, absolutely. It's crazy, man. It's surreal. You know, people aren't out. You see parking spaces all the, all the time that as a realtor, you drive all over Hell's Half Acre. You got to show places in the city. You know, you're always looking for parking and just to see, you know, all the spaces open and, you know, people not walking on the street. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a serious thing. Yeah. You to pull together, yeah. you know? Absolutely. I mean, you raised a good point that physically we might be way farther apart from each other, but I think emotionally and spiritually, we're getting more positive. We're getting more, uh, we're, we're getting closer and we're getting more supportive and positive with each other. If we, if we if we see some people from across the street, we wave. And we might not have done that before. But now it's like everyone's waving, like, hey, how you doing? Having conversations from, like, you know, across the block. Always these Zoom ha happy hours, Zoom ha Zoom hangouts, uh, right. Google hangouts. Uh, people jumping on, you know, 16 different windows and having conversations. Me and the wife just did it 
with her parents and her, and, and her sister and brother-in-law. Um, nice. You know, we did kind of like a family gathering on Zoom last night uh, with, with, with the babies and the dogs. Um, it's, it's things like that, you know, my mom's a little oh, my mom's a little bit old tech, so I'm like pulling my hair out trying to get her on Google Hangouts, get her webcam working, and it's not right now. It's a little frustrating, but uh, but uh, you know she knows how to work a phone at least. So we're on the phone, you know, quite a bit, always talking, catching up, you know, staying in touch. Um, uh, I guess you know I guess you know for my my third my third act my third little chapter. In, in these in these episodes is uh, what are you wh what kind of films or or series if you I don't know if, you know if you're on the Netflix or the Hulu any series any any uh, shows or movies or books or even online tutorials that you might be binge watching binge studying right now to keep your mind occupied uh, to take advantage of this downtime you know. And people always, you know, friends or, you know, maybe family members when, the, when they talk to me about TV, I, I'm always, I've always been the guy, I have it on ESPN. You know, I've always watched sports. Well, there's no sports. <laughs> there's no sports right now. There's no sports, like, right. you know, at all. Right. So there's reruns, like, you know, and I'm not the type of guy to watch a game twice. Right. Uh, so, I don't know. Um, I've watched... Uh, I think it's called Godfather of Harlem with uh -huh. Forrest Whitaker. Okay. I've seen some episodes of that. But at the same time, I'm in I'm in the midst of a move too. So like I just got I just got Fios to come over two days ago to hook up the internet and the cable. Um so I'm sure once I get this all set up, hopefully by this weekend. Oh, that, so that's uh, you know I'll I'll be watching more shows, but yeah, you know, I'll probably catch up. You know, I, I stopped watching uh walking dead probably at least a year and a half ago. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'll catch up on that. But you know, I've been outside a lot too, man, in the car going back and forth, working on the house. Um, taking, I've been taking runs, you know, it's getting to be springtime. Um, but yeah, man, I'm sure as this thing drags on, I'm going to be looking to, I, I, I want to see the, I've never seen uh, Ozark mm -hmm. or everyone's talking about the documentary on the tiger. What's he called? The tiger. King. Every, everybody's talking about Ozark and tiger King right now. Yeah. 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 So yeah. inevitably I'll, I'll peep those. Yeah. I definitely want to check out um, Godfather of Harlem. I just, you know, I just, uh, you know, sifted through some of the, this, the, the stills from the show so that looks interesting it looks like he's involved uh this character it's based on a true story i take it uh yeah uh bumpy johnson bumpy johnson yeah yeah so. look, the old gangster in uh in new york okay very cool very cool yeah from what? what is it the 60s or well it looks he's like it he if he was involved it looked like he was involved with malcolm x he, uh -huh. was, he was somehow loosely I don't know. I don't. I didn't watch the show, so I can't speak on that. But I saw pictures. That it looks like he was somehow associated or involved with the uh, the life of Malcolm X. Yeah, there's some good guys in there. Paul Sorvino's in it. Okay. Um, the guy from Law and Order. Are you talking about um, Vincent D'Onofrio, the guy from Full Metal Jacket? That's right. Yep, Full Metal Jacket. That's him. Yeah, he's in it. He's a pretty bad dude in it. Yeah, you should check it out. Definitely. Yeah, I got a uh, pull. I pulled it up here on the uh, here. That that's him right there. Yeah, that guy's an incredible actor. So, yeah, and I, see, and I can I, I can pretty much tell that's supposed to be Malcolm X. It it's real. Like, uh, it's it's it has a lot to do with with the uh, you know with uh, the blacks and the whites too. Like there's a lot of race stuff involved in it. Okay. You know, Italians and Irish and sure. You know. Yeah, I'll be, I'll be sure to check it out. Yeah, it definitely looks good. I'm, I'm, I've always been interested in um, Malcolm X, JFK, Martin Luther King, and, and stories. Uh, Denzel's, Denzel's movie, American Gangster, I think was kind of set in the 60s and 70s, maybe a little bit. American Gangster, Denzel in that, in that movie, Frank Lucas, mm -hmm. if I remember correctly. Yeah. Bumpy Johnson was his mentor. 
You okay. remember that? Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Remember, remember okay. in the beginning when they lit the guy on fire? That was I, he. He worked for Bumpy Johnson. Okay. And he he even talks about Denzel talks about him in the movie. Okay. Frank Lucas. Okay, so Frank was Bumpy. Bumpy was Bumpy. Frank's mentor. Correct. Bumpy was Frank's mentor. So I guess, I guess, American Gangster was seventies. Yeah, seventies when the you know the, the heroin thing and you know. During right. Vietnam. Right, because the okay, so with with American Gangster, uh obviously Denzel was a part of the like the, the the black mob, the black crime cartel in New York, and they were dealing with French Connection heroin. So the movie French Connection with Gene Hackman, the French Connection was about heroin that these French gangsters were bringing over into New York. And then and then Russell Crowe's character in American Gangster wanted to take down the crooked cops that then took, that then stole all the heroin from that French Connection heroin. And, and, and then there's a movie called The Prince of New York. Not The King of New York with Christopher Walken, but The Prince of New York with... Treat Williams. Treat Williams played an undercover cop. Never heard of it. And so I think it's I think it's the Prince of New York with Treat Williams, Serpico, American Gangster, French Connection, and apparently this show, Godfather of Harlem. They're all kind of connected all around what was known as the French Connection heroin. And it all started with story like filmmaking wise, it all started with this movie called The French Connection with Gene Hackman, where these French gangsters yeah, I saw that. That's one with the classic car chase. Classic car chase in, in New York. Yep. 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 So, yeah, I definitely want to watch Godfather Harlem because it's, it's kind of all connected, all kind of interweaves the same sort of events and stuff like that. So that's definitely on my list. Uh, yeah, last night, um, last night I started watching this movie called Underwater with Kristen Stewart from Twilight fame. But she plays a, a mechanical engineer in this super deep underwater drilling site it's like six miles deep and there's an accident half of the structure kind of like implodes they kind of have to survive they got to get to like another rescue ship it's if you like the abyss if you like aliens if you like the abyss if you like uh what's that other one? Oh, you know like those really intense submarine movies where like half the submarine is like leaking or flooding like those really intense like claustrophobic suspenses underwater is pretty good i haven't even i'm only halfway through it and i'm already talking about it because it's really freaking intense but you know man mo underwater movies like on on submarines and, and the stuff you're talking about and mm -hmm. then space movies for yeah. some reason they give me the creeps man. because there's nowhere to go outside the facility exactly it's really claustrophobic and it's <laughs> like we'll see now <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you're right, you're right. But there's really no, there's nowhere to, if you're the danger, if the danger is inside the vessel, there's nowhere to go outside the vessel. And like you're double fucked. Yeah. That's yeah. where that, that's where that extra claustrophobia, that extra level of intensity and danger and suspense comes from is because I go outside the submarine, I'm going to drown or the, you know, uh, what is that? The pressure? That underwater pressure will like just smash you. Will break your or, neck. Break your neck. You know, make your head implode. If not, just simply drown. I remember seeing those movies as a, as a kid, like mm -hmm. you know, on the, like a Saturday afternoon, and then in the summer, and then walk out, and it's all sunny and nice out, and you're like, oh, thank God. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, like uh, te a terror, terror in the house, terror in the house type mo type movies. Someone breaks in the house, you can just leave the fucking house. Go run to the neighbors. Go call the cops, but not on a spaceship, yeah. not in a submarine, not in some sort of underwater, underwater drilling site vessel type deal. Um, yeah. So, so I guess uh, our, our our fourth and final chapter, you know, uh, almost coming to a close here. I mean, we can pontificate as long as we want. You know, we don't have a time limit. But um, my next you know, point, I guess, in, in our episode here is what is your next agenda, your next goal or goals, plan or plans, your next whole encapsulating agenda as far as the next month, the next month and a half, next two months, 
um, while we're on this quarantine lockdown? Well, I have a few listings that uh, I'm going to be making a bunch of calls on. Um, I actually do have to do a couple virtual tours. And, you know, social media, I think, is going to be important right now. Absolutely. Uh, doing stuff like we're doing right now, you know, communicating with the people from a distance or using technology. Um, and, well, like I said, I have a, a buyer in definite need right now and that, you know, that could take, you know, 30 to 45 days to see through. Mm -hmm. um, I think keeping close contact with past clients and just, you know, convey to them um, that this still can be a great time to buy or sell. And in all honesty, you never want to, you know, you don't want to discourage a seller ever, but you know, if a seller needs to sell, I mean, I, you know, but I would feel like, I would feel like this has somewhat of a advantage to the buyers because, you know, they could be scared. How long could this take? If someone really needs to sell their house, obviously they may be willing to sell it for less of a price. Absolutely. Um, so with my buyers, I'm, you know, for my buyers, I would, I would try to explode, you know, I would try to find those types of situations. Um, and yeah, you know, I mean, like I said, it's all about how people feel, you know, people that are uncomfortable, you know, going out or, you know, I, I can even, there's definitely clients in the past just of how they are. I would, I would say that, you know, it, even suggesting that they, you know, they go out as a, you know, go out and look at homes or someone or, you know, someone that maybe th was thinking about selling their home would put it on the market and let people who they don't know come in their home could even take offense to that. So you got to be real gentle with people, you know, in a situation like this. Uh, but that's all you can do, man. Um, and, you know, if all else fails, you know, I'll just, I'll probably be sneaking houses in your neighborhood, buddy. <laughs> taking, right. silver, taking silverware. <laughs> oh, God. Just sell it the track. <laughs> well, I mean, I'll, if you want to touch people's silverware, you might be at risk. Yes. Well, I'm going to wear the latex gloves <laughs> okay. and the mask. Yeah. I mean, I, uh, I don't know. I, I haven't heard of any looting. I haven't heard of any home invasions, you know, it's just, I don't think, I think, uh, you know, and I know, I know you're not serious, obviously, but, uh, or I wouldn't have said it. <laughs> yeah, I know. Right. But, you know, I haven't heard any reports about like the crime rates growing down in, in, in areas in, or generally, you know, but I, I would assume that crime rate is somewhat going down because even criminals are going to not be stupid enough to go out and, you know, risk subjecting themselves to the coronavirus. Let's hope. Yeah. Let's hope that situation doesn't occur. And, you know, then what does that do, the, do, the, do to the uh, law enforcement economy? What does that, I mean, sh at, at one point, isn't there, I mean, think how we, we haven't had massive reports of looting, of rioting, of, of uh, mass hysteria, of civil unrest, of civil disturbance, which I'm kind of on my toes, you know, waiting to hear about in case me and being in the National Guard, I need to be called up. Because no, no, there hasn't been any major calling up of National Guards, except for, from what I understand, New York. Well, I think we're still, in, you brought it up earlier, I think we're still in the phase where, you know, it's not, it hasn't brought us to the point of desperation like that. I feel so like we're still, you know, pulling together, we're all hopeful, you know, we're all kind of feel like we're in this together at this point, you know. So hopefully that remains and doesn't become the, a situation where, yeah, where people are, you know, people are losing jobs and money and they can't pay their mortgage or feed their families, you know, something like that would bring about, could possibly bring about some problems mm -hmm. in society. But, you know, I think at this point, yeah, like, you know, I think we're, everyone's trying to pull together and stay positive and be smart, you know, and look out for each other, hopefully. Yeah. Um, I don't think, I don't think it would be a big problem, but my biggest fear, I'm not exactly sure how it went down with the Spanish flu 
you know, in the, in the 1910s, in 1900s, 1910s in that area. But the Spanish flu came back a second time, even worse. And, I, and from, from what I understand, if, if I remember correctly from other people having mentioned the Spanish flu, is that it was more deadly the second time. Um, and I guess my only fear is someone says, oh, hey, we have a vaccine now. And everybody just starts going out, hugging and kissing everybody, orgies left and right, you know, touching, uh, <laughs> holding hands. And then this thing just goes rampant. And now it's like, guys, we said we have a vaccine. We didn't say we have 80 million vials of the vaccine. Now you just, now you just done fucked up everything by just touching everybody and massively spreading this thing. Cause now you think everything's fine and dandy or, you know, or maybe the vaccine doesn't work that well. Maybe the vaccine does kill some people. I mean, that, I think there's been, you know, you know, previous vaccines where it had an inverse adverse effect on some people on a, on a, on a select few. And so, <laughs> you know, hopefully we don't just go completely horse shit haywire and like just start hugging and kissing people on the mouth and then mass spread of it thinking, Oh, it's fine. We have a vaccine for it. Well, it's not that simple. They have to make a shitload of the vaccines first. So I don't know. That's like, that's, that's it. Well, um, if, if you, if you had one thing, one point to make to anybody listening to the show, I mean, I don't have that many followers, so I doubt anybody's listening, but in case I do have a fan or two watching this podcast, if you had one thing to say, uh, one, one point of advice, one, you know, one closing remark to put out there, what would that be? Well, get some sleep. I think you. obviously you, you got to look, you, you, you look tired. So is that it? Get some I mean, sleep. I mean, I've been working in the house all day, man. I've been, I've been painting. <laughs> I had to lift about 40 boxes of flooring and bring it into the house. Yeah. I'm a bit tired, but I awesome. would say, I would say, um, um, I would say, you know, you obviously you have to do what you have to do. You got to, you know, you gotta need to have your groceries. You need to, you know, if you have still are fortunate enough to be doing work and, and you have to go somewhere for work, you have to do that. But I think the six foot rule that everyone talks about is, is smart. I think if you, you know, you wash your hands, you don't try to avoid, you know, touching things and uh, you keep your distance from people. And, you know, you're not around people too much or the people that you are around, you know, you, you know they've only been around you or you know where they've been. Um, but, you know, that's about all you can do. At the same time, you can't live in fear. Um, you just got to be smart. Um, so, and use this time. I think another good thing is, you know, use this time to improve other parts of your life besides, you know, your social and, Maybe even a lot of people aren't going to work. So, you know, I think there's going to be off time that you should use to, you know, make yourself better in some way. Write some damn poetry or something. <laughs> Hell yeah. Hell yeah, man. Awesome. Well, thanks for, thanks for coming on Zombie Squadcast. Uh, any socials, any websites, any, anything you want to put out for yourself? Because um, like in these times, you know, we're still trying to hustle. We're still trying to grind. We're still trying to, you know, stay proactive and productive and, you know, feed, feed ourselves still. So any socials, any marking, any plugs you want to put out for yourself? Uh, yeah. At Baird Real Estate is my Instagram. B-A-Y-A-R-D Real Estate. At Baird Real Estate. And my Facebook is uh, same thing. And then okay. Seth Haskins. I'm at Remax. I'm in Bethesda. I'm always around. All right. All right. Awesome. Man. Awesome. It was great having you on, Seth. Uh, to those out there, thanks for watching Zombie Squadcast. Like, subscribe, share, click, comment, thumbs up, thumbs down. If you don't like it, I don't really care. Ring the bell for notifications and check us out next time. Thanks again. All right, Glenn. Later. Later.